The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Toll-free worldwide is 1-800-610-7035. Email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com and on MSN Messenger, xzoneradiotv at hotmail.com and our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Linda Brown, and we're going to be talking to Linda about her book. It's entitled In Secret Diffusion. The Upper Realm Answers Questions About Earth. And uh, joining me now from Clearwater, Florida, is Linda Brown. Hey, Linda, welcome to the X Zone. Hi, Rob. Thank you. Tell I'm us, looking forward to this. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Linda. Well, um, I, I'm a regular person, but I've been talking to the Holy Spirit for 30 years and really keeping that a secret. Um, because when all of this psychic business started for me mm-hmm. in 1980, it kind of created such havoc that um, I turned it off for 15 years, and then it came back in 1995, and I decided I wouldn't tell anybody about it because um, they had become so alarmed that I was going crazy that uh, I, I decided it was more politic to keep it quiet. But I've been writing uh, all along Mm -hmm. as I carried on my normal life. And now I've decided to publish a book that gives a little bit about what our conversation has been, uh, me and the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm a world traveler, Mm -hmm. and I like to backpack alone around the world and um, made a, a circuit around the globe in the Northern Hemisphere in 2005-2006, and at the time I was um, 67, 68 years old. I turned 68 on the journey, so I was doing it on my Social Security. So I'm a world explorer as well as an inner explorer. When was the first time you realized in your life that you had psychic abilities? Uh, I was around 42, Mm -hmm. and... um, I had done a great deal of praying. I was uh, very enthusiastic about God. I studied religion a lot, and and so I was accustomed to meditating and praying. But I had, <laughs> as most of us perhaps, never thought I would get an answer back. Never hear anything back. And other members of my family had more psychic ability than I did. I never really thought of myself as being psychic at all. So that was a realm that I was totally unfamiliar with. So I was kind of uh, afraid when this all started, um, not having any clue about what to do, how to protect myself from maybe annoying influences that also go on within the mind, and especially when your hearing abilities are opening up, that opens you to other things uh, that you would like to be protected from. So, really, I was uh, a baby in that um, avenue and don't have a strong psychic background. I still don't call myself psychic exactly because I don't quite fit that uh, word. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been mostly a great deal of inner um, communication 
All right, Linda, please stand by. We've got to take a commercial break. Linda Brown is our guest. She's the author of In Secret Diffusion, The Upper Realm Answers Questions About Earth. Her website is www.heyboomers.com. That's www.heyboomers.com. And Linda and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talk Star Radio Network and on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Linda Brown is my special guest. We're talking about her new book. It's entitled In Secret Diffusion, The Upper Realm Answers Questions About Earth. Her website is www.heyboomers.com, and that's H-E-Y-B-O-O-M-E-R-S. Dot com. So, Linda, what was it like the very first time you realized that you were speaking or communicating one-on-one with the Holy Spirit? Well, I, it's a funny little story that when I first really caught on that I was trying to be contacted by mm-hmm. the upper realms or something, uh, I would be sitting in the library. I lived in Aspen, Colorado then, and... It, would go to the library quite a bit, and I always thought their light fixture must be very faulty, the fluorescent ceiling light, because I could hear this buzz, this high buzz, and never thought any more about it. And then I realized when I was in another building, they had a light fixture that must be faulty, too, because I kept hearing this high-pitched sound. Mm -hmm. Finally, I focused on the sound and just listened closely to it, and gradually it uh, wound down to a slower rate so that I could hear some words. And it was kind of like saying, what in the world? Why aren't you listening to me? Will you please listen? And I realized there was a voice making sense behind it. So that was kind of when I first got the idea that there was communication possible. And there was a lot of very complicated uh, times because when you open up, when you're able to hear more than just one entity tries to get your attention, mm-hmm. and there's a kind of a belt that I call the Green Goblin Belt, maybe hovering close to Earth, in which those entities are mischievous spirits that are not going to do you any good. They're looking for a human being to drive. And so I think that all of us to whom this happens have to sort of work our way through that and get not get tripped up with it. But I've always been so close to God and and to the Holy Spirit that I've chit-chatted with them constantly all my life, just walking along, talking. So it was perfectly natural for me to kind of grab hold of his hand and, you know, uh, speak to him directly. And I have developed a, a conclusion that any of us who have this experience and who hear voices are actually in a position to sort of choose who it is we are speaking to or to name the level that we're ready to accept. Um, I talked to a woman who heard voices that upset her so much that she decided it was only her own inner self Mm -hmm. and that she could live with. And so she talks to Claudia, her name, Claudia. So Others may name it um, Seth or Ramtha or, or some of these names that we've heard. I just decided I was talking to the Holy Spirit, and sure enough, that was the confirmation. So I think that we, having free will down here, ultimately really choose the level that we talk to. 
How do you know for a fact that the voice that you were hearing or communicating with was in fact the Holy Spirit? How did you confirm this? Well, um, because I call him that and he answers, <laughs> which is kind of a flip thing to say. Another flip thing, it was uh, in my book, I try to deal with that question also. And in the introduction, I say, you know, there's no proof. I can't prove it to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, and so I'll give you, reader, the same uh, freedom that I had to decide who it is I'm speaking to. And if you want to call it King Kong, then that's good with me. That's just fine. And then I go on to say, but you got to admit he's a mighty smart gorilla. Um, because the answers that I receive to all of the questions that I asked really hold together. They're quite striking, they're quite unusual, and certainly many of them were unexpected. Well, what kind but of questions they, what kind of questions yeah. did you what kind of questions did you ask that that ultimately led you to believe that you in fact were speaking to the Holy Spirit? What what are these questions that amazed you, mesmerized you with the answers? <laughs> okay, well, uh, that's partly two different questions. Um, I think I just became assured that I was talking to the Holy Spirit, uh, and then I asked all these questions, and the fact that he could answer them well uh, confirmed what, what, questions? what I already believed. But what questions oh. did you ask? Well, first, uh, there are so many. Uh, I, I decided to be Barbara Walters. What would she do if she had somebody with this kind of authority on the line? What would she ask? And so I made a long list of all the questions that I could think of. Mm-hmm. Um, started out with that, and most of them would concern our own life as earthlings and, and human life. Starting out with death, I was so curious about death because we don't know that, you know, what happens at that. But then, uh, and, and going on into reincarnation and birth and all these things that have to do with life on Earth. But then I wanted to know about the aliens and about the Bermuda Triangle and Atlantis and um, things that we just wouldn't even know if he was telling the truth or not. Consciousness and non-physical existence and... Um, well, these are, these, are certain, these are great questions, but what were the answers? Well, it would take us a long time. <laughs> well, I'd like to hear some to, uh, answers because I'd like to validate your story as well. Okay, um, why don't you pick uh, something that, if, if it's in the um, kind of the questions that I've answered, pick a topic and ask me, and maybe if I have written about it, I would be able to paraphrase. The all, all, all right, what was the, what was the answer about reincarnation, since the Bible doesn't believe in reincarnation? This would be a very interesting answer. Yes, and my former religion didn't. Uh, agree with reincarnation either. Mm -hmm. I was a Baha'i, a member of the Baha'i faith for 33 years, and they did not accept reincarnation, therefore I didn't believe in it um, until all this started happening for me. And the fact that we diverged in our beliefs is one of the reasons that I withdrew from the Baha'i faith Mm -hmm. eventually. Um, But what really... uh, he, he was explaining that, for instance, the two questions, the two ultimate uh, origin questions that the great creative force, which is my name for God, it's just a bigger name, I think, um, that he was asking himself before creating any of this was, number one, how would I behave in any given situation? Number two... Would I, could I, then turn around and recognize myself from within those given situations? And so that uh, life and creation has really been kind of a big laboratory experiment, a big scientific uh, chance to answer these two questions. All right, but can I take you back to my question? What did the Holy Spirit say about reincarnation? Okay, well, this is... Each of us were created by uh, receiving a bit of consciousness from the, from God, 
And then we were sent into a given situation, and for us it was life on earth, mm-hmm. um, so that we have a lifetime in which to um, work and to try to spiritualize, which is the ultimate reason that all of us are created. Um, then we die, and uh, depending upon our behavior and our actions done during the, the time we were on earth, we frequently get a chance to come back and to work on further spiritual uh, problems or correcting psychological problems and to simply refine ourselves so that we can define many lives one at a time, come in, live them, and then when we die, if we haven't self-destructed somehow, um, we get another chance to come into life again. All right, well, let me ask you this then. If that was really, or if that is what the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit told you, Uh why doesn't the Bible talk about reincarnation? It's a very good question, Mm -hmm. and I don't know. Um, Most, many of the major religions do not speak of it, Um, and I don't know why. Did it? Uh, Actually, I haven't even asked that question. I, well, that would, you know, will, that, that, would have, that would have been one of the first questions I I would have asked is you know wait a minute hold uh-huh. on here Holy Spirit if you really are the Holy Spirit, um, why is it that in the book that was written called the Bible which is supposed to be the Word of God, reincarnation isn't talked about? Did you challenge? Well, did you challenge? One, did you challenge this spirit? as to his true identity or her true identity, because we know that negative negative spirits also have the ability to mock and impersonate other spirits. Yes, this is true. That's right. Uh, I didn't need to challenge. Uh, it, it, first, it didn't bother me. That question really did okay. not um, occur to me. Um, but also, I think many things are not told to us um, officially or formally through the manifestations of God who have come to bring all of the great religions, partly because being on earth and being alive during earth is a test to us. And it might be that if we knew that we had many times to make ourselves better and to perfect ourselves, then we wouldn't be focusing on this life. All right, stand by. We've got to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network and on the Exxon Broadcast Network. My toll-free number worldwide is 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, exxonradiotv at hotmail.com. And our website's www.exxonradiotv.com and xzonetv.com. Linda Brown's our special guest. Her website is www.heyboomers.com. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. 
Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7, 365. Dr. Brown is our guest this hour, Exxon Nation. Her website is www.heyboomers.com. She's the author of In Secret Diffusion, The Upper Realm Answers Questions About Earth. Linda, what was your, what was, what's the message you want to get out to people who read your book? What, what's the inspiration behind it? What is the drive behind it? I think that the major uh, recurring um, statement that comes through mm -hmm. in all of the various questions I asked and, and such underneath all of that is that the purpose of a human life is to become spiritualized. So spiritualization of the human being is the total purpose or the basic underlying purpose for our coming into uh, life on Earth. And I like to think of it as uh, an analogy of um, a water heater that has a pilot light. Mm -hmm. And when the pilot light is lit, then that water heater actually can perform as a water heater and produce a service for a greater dimension, the human world, mm -hmm. uh, by providing hot water. Um, but without the light being lit, it, it's, it sits. It doesn't really contribute anything. Uh, we all, our soul, our inner self, has this capacity to become enlightened and to become on fire with the love of God. And yet it's difficult to do that down in a material realm where we really don't see the proof. You know, so many people want that hard and fast proof, and yet it isn't provable exactly. It's a murk of materiality. And that second question, would I, could I turn around and see myself and recognize myself God through the murk of material materiality if I was in a place like Earth? Um, that's we, Each one of us that becomes spiritualized is providing the answer, yes, we can see you. But uh, a lot of the times that doesn't happen, and so it's like the pilot light never gets lit. But if I take from what you said in the previous segment that reincarnation, we come back, we, we die, we go, we come back. In order for us to die and come back, we are already transforming to spirit. We return from a spirit essence into a physical being. That doesn't make sense yeah. with what you just said. Well, also, reincarnation really isn't a gift that is given to everyone. You have to earn it. So that many people come to life only one time um, because they haven't gone from first grade to second grade, perhaps, by whatever they lived the first time. So it's not a flat across the board automatic answer. It's just one of the many things that some of us or some, some people might win by coming through once. All and right. You, you, you also say you also say that. Um, just give me a sec here. I I, I just read something here uh, in your book mm -hmm. uh, in the Secret Diffusion. You mentioned a green goblin stage that that you had to <laughs> deal with when you first became right. aware that that invisible others could contact you. Yeah. Okay. So so these green goblins. What exactly are they? You say that they orbit the Earth, but what are they? Are they spirit? Are they demons? Uh, what are they? I believe that they are human uh, spirits that died and really didn't have much of a belief in anything. And so they didn't, or, or perhaps they were very obsessed with Earth and, and the things of Earth, maybe, who knows, addictions, or just mm -hmm. concentrating on the Earth level. So that when they died, uh, they didn't rise very far. Um, they seem to be uh, rather stupid consciousnesses that are looking for someone else uh, on Earth alive that has open channels. 
All right, and, 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 you walk, and you're convinced that at least some schizophrenics are merely trapped in this green goblin psychic band that you believe hovers above the earth. Yeah, no, that was, it's my own personal theory. I've never really had a chance to talk about that to anyone, but I think that um, some people who have been diagnosed as schizophrenics mm-hmm. uh, may be so confused with what happens when they first, the psychic channels first open. And I'm sure many psychics will tell you that uh, you have to be on your guard. You have to uh, know how to protect yourself from the intrusive. Even when when you can uh, pick up mental telepathy, mm-hmm. you have to know how to sort of secure your own mind or it's going to become uh, a bombarded with other people's impressions and thoughts and wishes and that kind of thing. You just brought up so, a very interesting hypothesis. How does a person uh-huh. know? How does a person know that they are truly psychic and not on the verge of insanity? There you go. I, I, well, you don't. You just kind of. For one thing, it's how you handle it. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you are, well, when it started for me, I was in trance quite a lot. Um, this, this making of the connection is very traumatic, really. And so you stay in trance some of the time. Um, and so people think you're crazy. I was given the degree of schizophrenia at first. Uh, this was 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. It didn't stick, and I knew I wasn't, but how do you prove it? I think that the way you, you conduct did. your life, I mean, mm-hmm. can you actually in my case, go around the world by yourself for a year <laughs> without getting into huge trouble. You know, can, can you manage your life right and well? Um, that's proof that you are not schizophrenic. Why, do you, not why did you want to travel around the world? Oh, I have a huge wanderlust. I'm just a world explorer, and I mm-hmm. love to go uh, traveling. I started uh, working within the Soviet Union when it first opened up. I was working in citizen diplomacy, which was uh, really peace creation between the people of two countries that had been hating each other and separate for so long. Uh, So then I learned how to do this kind of very under-the-radar traveling, and Mm -hmm. I found out the world is very safe, and I just love that kind of exploration. What What is your personal mission in life? Um... I don't think I have one as far as I'm certainly not trying to convert anyone Mm -hmm. to this idea. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to become a guru or or start a new religion or anything like that. Um, So on this material, it's simply to share, just to say, hey, look at this. It's so strange and it's so interesting. How about reading it? See what you think. So that's not my personal mission. But I do think that I have many books to publish. Um, I have uh, eight scripts written that I want to start publishing in book form. Um, it's really just to, and to continue traveling. Mm-hmm. I would like to go back around the world backpacking, if I can do it at my age without falling down. <laughs> I'm just having a wonderful time. How often do you speak to the Holy Spirit? Oh, a lot. Every day. I mean, anytime. Mm-hmm. Anytime I want to. Now, have you and, have you ever asked the Holy Spirit about, um, let me see, intelligent design versus evolution? Yes. Yes, actually, I did. Uh, and I have a small chapter in the book opening it up. Um, and he said they were both right, that intelligent design or creationism Mm -hmm. is correct and evolution is correct. They're just starting from two different points, that um, there was a creator who designed it all, who put all of this into motion, so that's intelligent design, but then allowed it to evolve, and so it is not a conflicting statement whatsoever. What about animals? Where do animals fit in the grand scheme of things according to the um, Holy Spirit? Well, they're very important, of course, as far as uh, the created beings. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they have their own realm or their own uh, degree of dimension. They are humans, but they do um, pray <laughs> in a way. No, uh, they don't actually pray according to our definition of that. And th- this is where the title in Secret Diffusion came from, that I asked him the question, do animals pray? And the answer was yes and no. They don't pray the way we would do in words, but that they don't even need to articulate their their needs to him because they're always in constant communication, in secret diffusion. And they're, um, they know that I know, I know that they know, is the way he puts it. And also... While they're alive on this earth, they're not under any moral obligation to become spiritualized or to light their fire. They're already pure-hearted, and they are following their own self-preservation instincts. So um, this world appears different to them because they're living a different kind of life, but it's very harmonious with ours. I read somewhere that you call your book uh, a book of a thousand zingers. How, How would you explain that? Well, I think of a zinger as being something that hasn't been circulated, hasn't been talked about before, or certainly new to me. And again, I'm not conversant with a lot of the writings Mm -hmm. about the New Age uh, teachings and such. I'm really kind of a stranger to that. Um, But over and over again, in the answers to the questions that I received, I was getting such surprising truths. that were zingers, and so I went through the manuscript, and um, I, I could find at least a thousand in a book that was less than 200 pages. By the way, this book isn't available yet. It's coming out in mid-April, so it will be on Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble in mid-April. Now, is is this uh, is this a self-published book? Yes. Okay. Yes, now, I, I'm going through Outskirts Press. Okay. But it is self-published. T- tell me, what are some of the zingers inside your book? Oh, gosh, let me see. I'm looking at at the, um, well, he loves atheists and agnostics because uh, he, he said he'd be a member of their club if they would let him in, <laughs> if they believed in him. Um and let's see, there's marriage on the upper levels as well as here. Um, I'm trying to pick a mm-hmm. few. Uh, there's a lot about homosexuality, that they are uh, highly spiritualized individuals um, who are uh, were, didn't quite make the, the change when they came into Earth into the correct sex. Um, but they're very, very loved by him. Um, that, oh my gosh, here I'm trying to read all of my, that we almost had a third world war, uh, at this point, as we all know, we came pretty close to it and aren't quite out of the woods yet. And that three world wars is a terminal condition in the planetary sense, in the whole whole solar system and the universe can't be allowed and so these planets that hit the third world war status are usually executed Uh, earth has been spared and yet has had many third world wars occur in its long history but we have been allowed to continue and in a way earth has reincarnated in in this sense so so are you saying that if there's a third world war whatever world the third world war happens on the planet is annihilated yes why and that is because it's a, a terminal condition in that planet and it is contagious. Sounds like there's and eternal so, condition in the Holy Spirit, if that's what re- he really thinks. I think the Holy Spirit needs to get his head read. <laughs> okay, I'll tell him that. Please do. Uh, no, it's just on a on a universal scale. This is why uh, why would he, why would it, the it, why would that cause the destruction of a world? Doesn't that uh, isn't that the higher authority saying, "Geez, I goofed." So in order in order to clear it, I'm going to destroy everything I've created. That makes no sense well, whatsoever. It's uh, 
proven disunity among the people of the planet that have not been able to get along. And so they are annihilating themselves. And it is a, a pretty serious thing to have happen. But Earth has had many third world wars and yet has remained. And All right, so we've got to take our final break. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial sure. as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Linda Brown's our guest, www.heyboomers.com is her website. Her book will be out this coming April, Exonation. It's entitled In Secret Diffusion, The Upper Realm Answers Questions About Earth. It'll be available at Amazon.com. All right, let me see if, I, if I've if i got this correct, Linda. You first started channeling in a library, listening to the... Oh. The, the the humming sound of a transformer inside of a fluorescent light fixture. Is that correct? Well, that's when I uh, first thought about it or first noticed it. It was really over a period of okay. a long time, but I became aware that there was a voice in this sound, and mm-hmm. so it was kind of a high uh, vibration that was trying to get my attention. Okay, and, and then I you you, identi- you identified the voice who was trying to communicate with you as being the Holy Spirit. Yes, eventually. Okay. Yes. Uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't seem to have the reputation of what I would imagine a Holy Spirit to have. You know, I, I would I would imagine that a Holy Spirit, if it really is the Holy Spirit, would. Would would talk about the wonderment of of the world and and how to make things work, not about a three strike you're out annihilation policy that apparently is in place. Do, doesn't that concern oh. you? No, you should read the whole book because yes, it's it's throughout the book a lot of of wonderful wonderment and positive things. I was scrambling around to try to find some zingers, and that was a big zinger. It's probably too big mm. a zinger. To really throw out with mu- without much background, and, and you but also you is, also believe that there are a group of incarnate souls that that orbit the Earth called the Green Goblins, and that there's a connection oh, that's between my the, name for it. That's and, and my there's name. and there's a connection that's between the Green Goblins and schizophrenics. Oh well, Am I it's right? just that anybody that has open hearing channels mm-hmm. may receive impulses or input from a lot of different places. So that's just a little informal supposition on my part. All One right. thing on this uh, terminal condition of the World War III, the end, right now we've been in around the millennium time, the end of the world scenarios uh, by the religions have been expecting and predicting an end of the world, and it's called the end times. And so that uh, has not happened yet, or apparently... But it may have a Hey, Linda, I hate to do this, but we've just run out of time. I want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I, I've got grave concerns about your authenticity and what you're trying to say. It makes no sense to me. It really makes no sense at all. When we've got green goblins causing schizophrenia, schizophrenia and uh, we've got a Holy Spirit who talks about the annihilation of a planet after three strikes. I think there's a deep-rooted problem here. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network and Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't go away.